What's going on YouTube? Uh, another uh, tabletop video here. This has already been shown on my channel. This is a, uh, a Saiga 308. Now there's three, technically three different versions if you count the 100 series uh, or 101 I guess, Saiga 101. That's a rare unicorn. You're never going to actually fucking find that. Uh, but basically you have the 21 inch version and you have the 16 inch version. I owned both of those and had them converted and then had since sold them. And I discovered this one at a pawn shop and it was completely unconverted. It was just, it was basically a virgin rifle, teeny bit of rust inside of the gas tube, but other than that, just stock. Um, I was heavily debating doing a trigger conversion for this to get it to standard. So that's not to freak fucking... The YouTube draconian people out there, basically you're just returning it to a normal fire control group so that you can make it more modular for stocks and whatnot. Back in the day, the Saigas were at one point slept on, and then after that, they kind of became, uh, you know, fairly popular as people realized that they could get, uh, you know, a genuine Russian-made AK uh, and then do minimal work to convert it. Now, there's some neutering front sight, non-threaded barrel, forearm, so you'd have to add a bracket or change things out or add a little forearm uh, uh, piece there. Um, you would have to move the fire control group, and then from there you could go with the standard stock and pistol grip. But then they started coming out with cool conversion kits where the trigger guard was the pistol grip, and you had to do less and less to really kind of fix this up. The 762 by 39 545 and 556 would have these two little holes here. Whereas the Saiga 308 has this plate and you would have to cut a nut until they came out those cool trigger guards and then you didn't have to cut a T-nut anymore for a pistol grip. But circling back, this is my Saiga 308. So I could go on. I would say go to Mishiko, a uh, fantastic fucking channel. He covers like everything under the sun when it comes to the Saigas. Um, now Saiga, in, in my opinion, with when I was in the, the big AK game back in the day, they were out before Vepers. Vepers are like the enhanced upgraded versions, thicker barrels, better uh, imported stock design and trigger. Whereas you'll notice with the Saiga 308s, they have this, because of the longer action, they have this elongated bent sheet metal trigger. And a lot of guys didn't like this, so they opted to convert them. But because these are no longer being imported, I'm going to leave this as is. And one of the main reasons is this bitch back here. So this is a genuine Ismosh skeleton stock. This is imported from them. I, I, I got two of them. I got the adjustable one, which supposedly was done by American companies, and they also have a fixed stock version. Now, this is a pretty slick setup is they have this nice cheek pad. This isn't just plastic. This is, you know, basically the housing with a nice little kind of foam covered top cheek pad that that actually can can flip up and out of the way so down for iron sights up if you add an optic um, and it's got a slick setup there's a little uh, there's a little spring back here and you basically pull this back and then tilt it up or, or tilt it down and there's a little cutout that rests on this ridge here but pretty goddamn cool and like i say i have the standard fixed stocked one for if the adjustment pieces in this break. I bought a shit ton of spare parts, so I have spare cheek pads and things like that to get this operating spare, uh, uh, you know, uh, stock screws and everything like that. But basically, I want to leave this guy as virgin as possible because they're not making them anymore. Well, they're making them, but they're not importing them anymore. So what's out there is out there. And you can get really lucky at pawn shops, gun shows, even on your forum, old FUDs have these. They don't realize what they have. And it's like, oh, fuck, you know, it's a 308 AK. Hardest part to source right now for me would be like a 308 firing pin for this guy because they do differ. They have a little collar at the bottom. So I'm trying to source that. But supposedly, you can use just a standard free floating firing pin as a replacement. I'm unsure. Um, but, uh, but either way, you know, it's uh, it's still trying to get all the parts. I bought two trigger sets, bought a lot of the spare internals. So an extractor and a firing pin are kind of what I need to square away. As we move up towards the front of the rifle, I'll get into the magazines in a second. But you'll notice that I have the uh, the little Versapod adapter here. And uh, the reason I went with that is they have a 5 millimeter forearm screw. And what, it's like 8.30 seconds is basically the same, basically the same. 
So I just used that to mount the Versapod because I was going after a, an SVD style of, uh, of build where I have a rear mounted bipod and it actually works pretty goddamn slick. I'm not going to take it off now because it'll shake the camera and shit, but, um, but this guy can pop off and then I just have this mounting rod down below if I need to grip the handle. But realistically, this is more like a prone and bench shooting rifle. I'm not going and running and gunning and competing with it. So it's no big deal. But I thought that was a pretty slick setup, and it worked out perfectly. Got the flat, flush uh, uh, Versapod adapter. <clears throat> they sell a bunch of cool adapters for various rifles. Various price points with their different bipods, but this one just kind of worked, and I opted to get the uh, the metal feet because it just kind of fit the profile a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and leave the factory stock, even though they have dedicated Saiga forearms that don't require any modification. Uh, the, the lineup for this flat piece will be a little bit different. I actually had to trim the inside portion of this flat piece to better cradle the factory forearm. I also bought a spare forearm as well in case anything happens to this. Um, so now it fits perfectly and it's, it's basically snug. So it kind of wedges in there. I may at one point convert the front end. I'm having a hard time struggling with that, whether or not I actually want to do it. Cause I'd either want to hog out a 24 millimeter front sight base and, and apply it. I don't want to do a direct thread because it's going to be different threads, which would then mean if I wanted actual threads of like 14 by one, I'd have to turn the barrel down. And I don't know if I want to do that with this. I, I kind of, I might just leave it as is because it's not going to be a high volume firing, you know, 308 AK. In fact, if you want to buy a, a high volume firing 308 AK that has a current, you know, logistics supply of, of repair and parts and stuff, I'd get the Zestava M77. Magazines are plentiful. Parts are plentiful. There's repair options. Saigas, this is all we got. That's it. So so that's why I'm trying to leave this fairly virgin. Um, with the magazines, that's what I'll touch on this. This is a CS Specs or C Specs, as some people call it, steel magazine. This is either his third or fourth gen. I Back in the day when I owned my 16-inch version and my 21-inch uh, version, they were just basically like massive steel bricks and they worked. They worked beautifully. It's just that they were they weren't contoured. They were just big, chunky steel bricks with sharp edges. He has since fully stepped his game up. And let's see if we've got a spare in the box. And I mean these things look fucking phenomenal now. So if you if you do have a Saiga 308, this this is the way to go. And and this is why I was so confident in buying this rifle again is, is I found his new generation of mags. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, all right, I'm going to go with that. So now, obviously, with AKs, there could be a little bit of file work that you have to do to get them to fit, but mine pop in and feed just fine. Um, I'll kind of go down the line with some of the mags I got. So this is the factory eight rounder that they that they got. And what's funny is I found this at a pawn shop across the road. And then I went to the pawn shop next to it because I hit up all the pawn shops in my area. And they have two factory sealed eight rounders. And I bought those because it still had the, the little import, you know, sticker information on it. Brand new, still in the in the package. And those I'm not going to open. I'm just going to leave as is. But Polymer Magazine kind of has a weird kind of... Uh, not quite gritty texture to it, the polymer, but it just, it feels different. I'm not going to really shoot this one a whole lot since it's just polymer and it's a factory mag. And again, these are getting harder and harder to find. <clears throat> so next we got, let's see if we can get all these guys out. Surefire gun mags. These guys were basically the main suppliers of the Saiga line of, uh, Let's see if we can get all these bitches in here. The main supplier of Saiga magazines without any kind of modification. And you'll notice the Saiga mags, both the 308, 762 by 39, 545, which is really rare, and the 556. The 762 by 39 and 556 were actually super common, but the 545 I never saw in the wild. But all of them utilize a feed ramp on the magazine. That's for import purposes. So these are all proprietary, and this is it. Like this is this is basically what you got. Now there there used to be a company called uh, Uinta or Unita. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, and they made a really cool 20 round magazine. <coughs> and they they have since folded under, but. 
Fuzzy Bunny Gun Mags, I think is the company. And I've been in correspondence with them and they own the molds. And right now they're working on floor plates and followers, I believe, but they got springs and bodies. So I'm, I told them, I was like, once you get one to market, man, just, I want to buy one. So, but, uh, but back to the Surefire, not, not to be con confused with, uh, uh, you know, the, the, well, I guess I guess it yeah, I guess that would be the same company, uh, but uh, but anyway, back to these. These came in a variety of different uh, different uh, capacities. So you have a standard like twenty five. This is a fifteen. I believe this is a ten, and I think this is either a three or a five. And these work really really well. Very robust. A uh, little feed ramp here. These can bust off. And at the time, because CS specs or C specs didn't have what he has now. I sold my my Saiga 308 because I was afraid like, you know, well, hey, if, if all I have are these polymer magazines, these things are going to bust off and then I got to buy another 20, 30, 50 dollar magazine. But now that he's got a fresh supply of 25, I believe 20 and 10 rounders uh, in the in the newest generations. Well, I mean, this is good to go now. I just wish this would have been out when I was younger. Lastly, you have the Pro Mags and again, one of the three companies making the polymer mags for him. Now these aren't terrible. I'm never going to use these two guys with my my longer barrel. I just got this in a package deal with the other Surefires here. But uh, but basically the the longer ones tend to have a little bit of issues. Now I believe they're quoted as 24 rounds. These hit and miss, but the 10 rounders, if you find those, those are good to go. When I used to have my 16 and 21 inch, I would use the 10 rounders like crazy, and they worked perfectly i mean spring tension was perfect lock up feeding everything was great uh, but uh, but they also made these longer mags which actually do look pretty dope inside of the 16 inchers uh if you're opposed to having the more blocky square ones now the saving grace to these guys is if you did want to chop them down these ridges give you the ability to just move this on up and then you just cut the spring so you could actually shorten these if you wanted to uh so that was pretty cool so for states that had you know, magazine capacity restrictions. It was always a, a pretty cool thing to be able to do that so readily. Uh, but uh, but all in all, yeah, this is the Saiga 308 as seen on my other video. And uh, uh, I just I kind of come in full circle. A lot of the guns I used to own, I sold when I was young and impatient. And now it came full circle and I own it again. So it's kind of like just you know, going out into the wild. The other ones were permanently converted. So that's, that's how I know this wasn't my old one, but just owning it again, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and again, I pulled the trigger on this Saiga 308 because my state was threatening to, to do some dumb fucking cunt anti-gun laws. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just buy it and then I'll have it. And then, you know, they can pry from my cold dead fingers. But, uh, but other than that, um, that's why I pulled the trigger here. Realistically, unless you're a collector or familiar with the Saiga 308s, I would honestly go and get the Zestava uh, M77. Uh, you will not be disappointed. They're phenomenal rifles. Plus, they got an adjustable gas block. The Saiga 308s, if you wanted to bring this up to a standard kind of build, it is a little bit of work. It is easy to do, but I would honestly leave it. You know, whether no, regardless of what Saiga you find, if it's in its factory form, just fucking leave it. Like, they just it's going to go up in price, and there are already other options on the market. You know, it's kind of like bubbling, uh, you know, certain rifles. It'd be like taking an old Norinco and just fucking chopping it up. And then now, you know, it loses its value. Yeah, it's still a Norinco, but it's not like what it was. So that's why I'm kind of leaving this just like this. And again, since it's sort of a an SVD style of build, I don't mind the, the fucky trigger back here. And again, this is just like a, a bench sheet metal trigger. Uh, it's, it's akin to the Norinco Hunter. That's the only other, uh, kind of trigger I've seen that's somewhat like that. But again, very readily convertible to a standard fire control group if you chose to. Um, this doesn't lend itself to a tremendous amount of accuracy, but it, uh, it, it definitely works. You know, minute a pie plate or for hunting, I mean, this thing excels it. Other than the funky trigger, it, it works perfect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Um, I'll probably shoot this one a little bit more once I get an optic, uh, on there right now. I just, uh, I haven't prioritized this as a project. Uh, I kind of got the things mounted, got the stock. And then after that, I kind of called it quits, but I'll pick up probably about three more of these guys. And then I'm going to have a guy make a PSL style of fold up, uh, magazine pouch. So, uh, I'll kind of have this whole kit 
build out just for this rifle since I thought it was kind of slick. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun toy to have. Uh, I'm just not going to put a shit ton of rounds down range. And again, I kind of lucked out. I bought this like huge mag package from a guy that kind of gave me each of the flavors and then CS specs had these guys and kind of lucked out with that. So everything just kind of all fell into place and, you know, helps the collection, I suppose. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, as I always say, I don't check my channel often, but, uh, but if I do and I happen to see it, I'll go ahead and respond. Um, other than that, thank you for watching and take care.